Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host, Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining us here today as we continue our discussion of factoring of polynomials, factoring of polynomials. We took a day and we talked about how having a polynomial broken down into factored form makes it easier for us to solve polynomial equations. Uh, we then took another day and looked at some, uh, some steps or some processes that can be used in order for you to put an equation into factored form. And we start with some very simple, very basic uh, trinomials. Most of them were quadratic trinomials that we then um, wor worked through. And so if you're a student in my class, um, I don't ordinarily include the answers to the homework on these slideshows, but because we're currently uh, doing more of our distance learning, um, I'm going to go ahead and put these answers up here for you. If you're not a student in my class, um, just bear with me. Let my students take a look at this. Um, I would recommend pausing the video if you're one of those students and you need to check your answers. And then if you have some questions, just um, hop on over to our Canvas page and send me a note and I'll be in touch with you shortly. For those of you that have already finished that and those of you that aren't really interested in that because you're not actually in my class, um, I am going to go ahead and give you a set of review problems as well. If we were in class, I would have my students work together on these to try and uh, just make sure everybody's on the same page before we begin today's lesson. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave these up here for you today. I'd recommend pausing the video uh, and trying these on your own. If you are having difficulty with factoring out the GCF or with factoring trinomials into binomials or with solving an equation that's already in factored form, I would recommend that you go back and watch the previous two videos, the two that are prior to this one, um, to make sure you understand those fully before you begin what we're going to do today. Because what we're going to do today, today is honestly a little bit more challenging, a little bit on the tough side, um, but it does help us uh, um, it, it does cause us to grow a great deal in our ability to solve um, these kinds of problems. So I'm going to assume that if you wanted to try these on your own, you have already paused the video and done that, and that you are restarting now to check your answers. When I look at question number one, I see 2x squared and I see 32x. I'm looking for the greatest common factor or the largest thing that can divide into both of these monomials, the 2x squared and the negative 32x. I happen to know that 2 and 32 can both be divided by a 2. x squared and x can both be divided by x. So I'm going to factor out a 2x squared, or a 2x. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, 2x times x does give you the 2x squared. 2x times negative 16 is negative 32x. For example, two, we have the uh, quadratic binomial 5x squared plus 25. I happen to know that both 5 and 25 can be divided by 5. I can see this term has an x. This one does not. So all I can do is pull out my 5. Notice that 5 times x squared is 5x squared, and 5 times 5 is 25. This third one over here, notice this is a quadratic 1, 2, 3 trinomial, quadratic trinomial. I have to find something that can divide into all three of these. Notice the 2, the 8, and the 42 can all be divided by 2. Notice that x squared and x can be divided by x, but this last one can't. Therefore, I cannot divide away an x. When I pull out the 2, 2 times x squared would give me 2x squared. 2 times 4x gives me 8x, and 2 times 21 gives me the 42. There again, if that was difficult for you, you're going to want to jump back two videos in this series and watch, I think it's number 63, Solving Polynomial Equations is where we discuss that. Uh, this next section on factoring, x squared minus 9x plus 20, this was discussed in our last lesson. We're going to want to take this and split it up knowing that x squared has to be an x and an x, knowing that in order to get a positive 20 at the end, I'm going to have to have either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative, and knowing that this middle sign right here tells me which of those to use. I'm going to be using a negative sign in both of these. In order for me to get a 20, I either have to multiply 10 times 2, 20 times 1, or 4 times 5, the only one of those that would add up to be the 9 would be 4 and 5. Again, I have this x squared, so when I split this up, I know it's got to be an x 
times an x, but this time I can see that I'm going to end up with a negative 48. The only way I get a negative number is if these two signs are different, negative and positive, or you could have put positive and negative. Either of those would have worked. And then this middle sign right here tells me which sign goes in front of the number farther from zero. So in this case, the 16 is farther away from the zero than the 3 is, therefore the 16 must be negative. When I'm working on the 48, I'm going to need two numbers that multiply together to give me 48. That would be 48 times 1, 24 times 2, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, uh, 6 times 8. But the only pair of those that add up to give me the 13 in the middle would be a negative 16 and a 3. One more over here. Notice again I have the x squared, so I know it's going to be x and x. I need two numbers that both multiply together to give me a 30 and that add up to be an 11. That's going to be the 6 and the 5. I knew the signs would both be the same because I looked right here and I looked right here to tell me which sign it would be. Last section down here. If I have something that's already in factored form and it equals a 0, the 0 product property says one of two things must be true. Either the x plus 3 must be a 0, because 0 times anything equals 0, or the x minus 8 must be a 0, because whatever this is, when I multiply it by 0, it would equal 0. And then I just solve these two equations separately. x is either going to be a negative 3, or x is going to be a positive 8. Notice this is not in factored form because it is not something times something else. There's a subtraction sign in the middle. In order to put this in factored form, I'm going to look and see, is there a GCF I can pull out? Well, yes, both this first term and the second term both have a 2 in them, and they both have an x. So I factor out the 2x. 2x times x minus 4 does equal 2x squared minus 8x. Notice this is now in factored form. 2x multiplied by whatever this is. The zero product property tells me either the 2x is a zero or the x minus 4 is a zero. So I solve each of those equations separately. Your solution is either zero or four. Now number nine is interesting. Uh, notice that I have uh, n squared plus 15n on one side equals negative 36. With this negative 36 over here, it's very difficult for me to solve using the zero product property. In order to use a zero product property, I have to have things that are multiplied together equaling zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this negative 36 to the other side using the property of equality. I'm going to add 36 to both sides, and I'm going to get this quadratic trinomial. Again, this is a trinomial, it's three terms added together. The zero product property only works if it's something times something else, so I'm going to write this into factored form. I know the first item in each parenthesis is going to be an n. I know that both signs are going to be pluses, and I know I need two numbers that multiply together to give me 36. Remember, whatever you pick to multiply together to equal to 36 have to add up to be 15. And then once again, n plus 12 times n plus 3 equals 0. This is something times something else. That means either the n plus 12 is a 0 or the n plus 3 is a 0. And I can just solve those separately. Again, those items are review items, so I did do them fairly quickly. Hopefully you didn't have too much trouble with them. If you did have a lot of trouble with those, I do recommend that you go back and review the previous two videos before you move on, because if you can't do the things that we just did on this page without great difficulty, what we're about to do next is going to be very, very challenging. Notice, today we're going to be factoring trinomials in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Yesterday we did x squared plus bx plus c. So the short version um, here is that we're, we've stuck a number here in front of x. We've got a leading coefficient that is not a 1. So for example, 3x squared plus 45x plus 108. Now, if we're lucky and we get a trinomial that looks like this, if we're lucky this will have a GCF. Fortunately, when I look at this, 3x squared plus 45x plus 108, all three of these 
have a greatest common factor of 3 that I can pull out of the equation. Now, this is best case scenario because if I pull this 3 out, what I'm left with is a quadratic trinomial that looks just like the ones you did on last night's uh, homework or in last uh, our, our video from the last lesson. We can do this the exact same way we've been doing all along. The only thing we have to do is hang on to this 3 on the outside. So, just like we did in yesterday's video, I'm going to take, let me grab my pen real quick, I'm going to take this trinomial and I'm going to split it into two binomials, but I'm always hanging on to this 3 on the outside. I'm going to ignore it, but I am going to keep it close by. So, the only way to get x squared is x times x. I look over here just like we did yesterday, and I know my signs are going to be the same. And then I look over here to see which sign they will be. They're both going to be plus signs, so I write those down. Now, I'm going to take this 36, and I'm going to ask myself, what times what equals 36? Now, I'm going to write them all out so you can see them. If I were doing this on my own, I would probably do this mentally. But we've got 36 times 1, 18 times 2, 12 times 3, 9 times 4, or 6 times 6. This is every set or every pair of numbers that when multiplied together will give me a positive 36 and also have a plus sign in the middle. Certainly we could do negative 36 times negative 1, but then we'd have to change these signs. The second part of this says whatever we pick from this list of options is going to have to add up to be 15. Can you see that choice on here? Hopefully you realized it's the 12 and the 3. If I asked you to factor this trinomial, you're going to factor out your GCF, factor out your GCF, and then you're going to treat it just like you did in yesterday's homework. Notice, by the way, that when I multiply this back together, I take the x times x, that's the x squared, I take the x times the 3, I take the 12 times the x, and I take the 12 times the 3. Notice these two middle terms are alike, and this would simplify back to this answer. Um, by the way, the, um, the number in the box, or the polynomial in the box, is the correct answer. A lot of people get confused and they think this or this or this might be the answer. This is the answer to the problem. Um, write this in factored form. This is me checking to verify that my work is correct. Does that make sense? Let me do another one of these. Um, factor negative 4x cubed plus 56x squared minus 192x. I'm looking for a greatest common factor for those three terms. Do you see it? A lot of people look at this and say, well, the GCF is going to be a 4. But I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to make a suggestion for you. Anytime you have a leading coefficient that is negative, you want to make the leading coefficient Wow, this is really hard to write with a mouse. Positive. We want to pull out a GCF that's going to make that positive. Now, it's a little early for me to explain to you why that works. I'll try and uh, hit that a little later in this video or in the next one. But just trust me, your life's going to be a whole lot simpler if you can make this into a positive number. So instead of pulling a GCF of 4 out, I'm actually going to pull out a GCF of negative 4. Notice, negative 4x times x squared is negative 4x cubed. Negative 4x times negative 14x is positive 56x squared. And negative 4x times positive 48 is negative 192x. Don't forget that when you pull out a negative in your GCF, you have to change your signs as well. Be really cautious about that. That's one of the leading mistakes that people make. Here's the good news. Your leading coefficient is now a 1, which means you can do this just like you did the homework yesterday. Um, again, we're going to split it in two. I know it's got to be x squared because x times x is the only way to get x squared. Um, notice that I have two signs that are going to be the same. And I look over here, I know they're both going to be minus signs. So I write those down. And then I'm looking for things that multiply together to give me a 48. Well, let's see, 48 times 1, 24 times 2, 
16 times 3, 12 times 4, and 8 times 6. But once I know this list, I have to find the pair that will add up to be a 14. Do you see those? Well, obviously that's the 8 and the 6. Notice um, when I write it in place, it is a negative 8 plus a negative 6, which is why we end up with a negative 14. And this is your correct answer. Once again, if you want to check this, you would multiply it together by multiplying the x times both, multiplying the negative 8 times both. That would get you here. Then you would combine your like terms. That negative 6 and that negative 8 are going to make a negative 14. And then lastly, you would take that negative 4x on the outside and distribute it back to all three. And you end up here, which of course is right where you started. Keep in mind that this bottom row is not your answer. Your answer is this section right here in the middle what I, where I put my, uh, my rectangle. I'm going to erase all that ink again. Remember, this is your answer. This is just going back and verifying that you did it correctly. Tell you what, take just a second. Go ahead and try um, this pair on your own. I'd recommend pausing the video and then um, and, and then watching it after you've had a chance to try this on your own. I'll hop back in here in just a second, assuming you've already done that, and I'll walk through it with you. As always, I always want to check for the GCF because if I can get that leading coefficient to be a 1, I'm going to be much better off. So I pull out the 5. When I go to factor this, I know there's only one way to get x squared. It's x times x. I know my signs are the same. I know they're both pluses. I know the only way to get a 6 is 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. And I know that of that pair, the only ones that add up to a 7 are the 6 and the 1. How'd you do? Over here, I probably should have hid this from you and made you try it without it, but I did have it up here just in case, um, uh, just in case it would be useful to you. Notice that we like our leading coefficient to be positive. Since this is a negative 1 in front of here, I am going to go ahead and pull that out. Don't forget that pulling out a negative 1 is going to change all your signs. And then this is going to factor just like the, uh, the ones on the previous slide. 72 times 1, 36 times 2. 24 times 3, 18 times 4, 12 times 6, and 9 times 8. Those are the only things that will multiply together to give you the 72. Which of those add up to 17? Of course, it's the 9 and the 8. I'll put a fancy little box around it. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go ahead and split this into two videos for you, two parts for you, because I think that's a lot of information all at once. You might want to, if you're in my class, begin your homework and see if the first few that you need to work out will have GCFs that come out. The next video is going to focus on what to do if that leading coefficient cannot come out as a GCF. Um, hopefully you'll find that to be um, not too overwhelming. So thanks again for watching. We appreciate you being with us. Until next time, you guys take care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.